Hey guys, I'm back. We're on day three of our uh, coffee table here that we're doing. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Michaela. I own Paint Fixation here in Middlebrook, Florida. And I just recently became a premier retailer so that if you are local, you can be assured that I carry everything in the Dixie Bell line. So uh, you can go up to the shop at Antiques for You on 801 Blanding Boulevard and find um, whatever Dixie Bell products that you need. So tonight is the third night that we're working on the coffee table. Last night I came on and put a second coat on the apron and the legs. And then today, earlier, I went ahead and put a second coat on the top because I wanted to be able to get started on the finish that I'm doing. Um, the finish that I've decided to do is similar to one that I did for a custom job for a customer that I did a couple months ago for her coffee table. And it's basically, I'm just going to use a few different colors. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a wet blend and then a little bit of dry brushing on top of that. I don't even know what to call it. It just, I liked it. She liked it. And so I'm going to try and recreate it here, um, I haven't done a lot of, um, I would say, different paint techniques live on uh, camera, so this should be interesting because, like I said, I do change my mind a lot when I'm painting. Uh, so the colors that I'm going to use tonight are Fluff, which is our second lightest white. Cotton is our lightest white. This one is next in line, Fluff. I'm going to use Gravel Road which is a really dark gray and it's got a little bit of a brown undertone. I've got Hurricane Gray, which is a little bit lighter than the gravel road and it's a little bit cooler, but it can be used with the warmer colors. Caviar, which is our blackest black. Mm -hmm. oh, let me turn off my notifications. I forgot to do that. And of course I can't get it to come down. Excuse me just a minute, guys. Where are they? Okay. Sorry about that. Right about that. And, okay, so the caviar is our black is black. And then I'm also going to be using pine cone just to add a little bit of brown, um, just a little bit. We won't be using a lot of this, but we'll, we'll be using this. And then for the apron, I'm thinking I'm going to do um, black wax and the recessed areas. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to go to a solid black on the little lip here. This lip has got a little bit of a um, raised area and I'm thinking I'm gonna do black there. Might change my mind, but for now I'm thinking uh, finish on the top, black, keep this color, black in the recessed area. That's what's in my brain right now. We'll see um, as I go along if that's gonna be what's gonna happen. So for brushes, I'm gonna be using several different brushes. I have one that I've already got. I like to keep my brushes in plastic. This keeps the paint wet, and so I can use it throughout the day. I can go eat lunch, come back. I can leave it overnight, and it will be just as soft as it was when I first started using it. This brush that I have here is a Mini from Dixie Bell. I have the Mini Angle. I have another, I think this one, actually, I think this is a Purdy. And then I have the Flat medium from Dixie Bell, and I have a Klingon at 035. I have all the brushes for sale on my website, which is listed in the comments above. I'm also going to be using some chip brushes to do the dry brushing on top. And I'm going to use some of the um, Easy Peasy Wax. And I'm going to put this on first so that it will dry while we're working on the top. And this is a really cool product because it's a spray wax. It dries in 30 minutes and it cures in six hours. So I'm going to use this as a barrier between the paint and the wax that I'm putting on later. If I put the wax directly on the paint, it will soak up so much of the wax that I won't be able to wipe back on the raised areas. It'll Some of it will come off, but it'll, it'll leave too much of a... Um, too much of the wax and I, I really just want to keep the wax in the crevices here. So I'm going to go ahead and spray the Easy Peasy Wax on to kind of create a little bit of a barrier. Now when you use the Easy Peasy Wax, I, I went to a conference a couple weeks ago and it was very interesting. Um, AJ did the talk on the top coats 
And one of the things that she showed us is that when you're using Easy Peasy Wax, you need to make sure that you shake it every time you use it. If you use it and you set it down 15 minutes later, you need to shake it again. And she kind of showed us the little trick. I'm going to shake it, and I hope that, I hope that you can hear this, but you're going to hear the wax separates when it sits. And so you need to shake it really well to combine all of the stuff that's inside that does the work. If you don't, then you're just spraying from the bottom and you're getting too much of the, um, I don't even know what word to use, but the stuff that makes it do its job, you're going to get too much of it in the, in the water that's mixed in here. Hi, Wendy, um, is up on top. So just take a listen. You hear that? So you shake it and it's loud. And then as all the particles mix together, it will, um, you can hear the difference, literally hear the difference. So that's a good tip that I learned not too long ago. Um, you know, I shake them and I just don't think about it, but that's a good tip for anybody who is just using it for the first time. Or if you are somebody who, um, it sells or whatever, it's a good tip to know, to tell your customer if they buy it from you, make sure they know that tip, that if it's quiet, it's ready to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on here so that it'll be ready to go when we get ready to do our black wax. And you only have to put it on the one time. By the time I get the top coat done, it'll be dry. So when you come on tonight, please let me know where you're coming from, where you live, where you're watching from, and what kind of projects are you working on? A little bit too much there. I see Wendy says she's never used the Easy Peasy Wax. This is a really cool product and it, and it really does work well. And the fact that it cures by the end of the day to me is amazing. Okay, almost done here. I'm gonna be using the paints on the top, so I don't need to do a barrier on the top. I was going to do some voodoo stain, but I changed my mind. All right, now we're gonna let that dry while we work on the top. Okay, now, um, the finish that I'm doing, <laughs> I've only done it one other time, like I said, for a customer, so there is no rhyme or reason to it. I basically just um, start laying paint, I keep it wet, and then after I get the first top part done, I'm gonna, kind of blend all the paints in together. And then after I do that, then I'm gonna go back over and dry brushes. But I'm gonna move this, and uh, yes, I love the, the wax too. I'm gonna move this, you don't need to see, well, you will see me, but you won't see, you don't need to see me like you do now. Okay, Better, oop. hang on a minute, let me unplug my phone. It pulled it. I'm working on trying to get better equipment here so that you can see better. Okay, so there's the top. I'm going to just put a little bit of each color in a tin so that, um, let's see, put this one. And like I said, this is just something that I kind of threw together for a custom job that I was doing. So it may or may not turn out to look similar. But I'm not doing this for anybody. I'm going to be selling this because it's too big for my house. So it doesn't really matter. All right, so let me show you the different colors. So can you see this? This dark color here, this is gravel road. And you can kind of see it's got a little bit of a brown undertone. This is the hurricane gray. Caviar is our darkest black. 
and then we have fluff and pine cone. And I may need more than more than that, but for now, that's um, what we're gonna do. I've got a couple brushes here. I don't really want to make my I don't want my paint to get muddy, so I'm gonna use a couple different brushes. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give the top a little bit of a spray so that it's um, damp. Okay. I want the paint to move. So let's see. I don't even know what color to start with. Let me see. We'll start with Hurricane Gray. Okay. I'm just going to start laying it on. And I'm not concerned about the edges because, like I said, I am, I am going to go back over those and I'm thinking I'm going to do those in black. But I'm just going to put the paint on. This is the Hurricane Gray. Okay. All right, so that's my first color. All right, and now I'm gonna grab some of the gravel road. And I'm just gonna lay it on. And you can see, I don't know, I, I hope you, you can, okay, so you can see the difference in the two colors. You can definitely see there's a little bit of a, more of a brown in this. Kind of a brown gray. But I'm gonna pull them together. And this is not really, I'm not really doing a blend like you've seen um, before. I'm sure if you've watched any of the other videos you've seen blending techniques. This is more of just laying the paint on, okay? I just want to get the paint on. Now I'm gonna alternate these two colors. I'm just kind of winging it as I go along here. Okay. And, okay, so this is the Hurricane Gray. And I'm keeping it wet so that my paint moves well, because I do want to try and keep this um, straight, okay? And you'll see where I'm going with this, hopefully, as we go along. Let me move this down here and put these on my head, okay? So that's Hurricane Gray, Gravel Road, Hurricane Gray, and now we're going to go back with the gravel road again. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I can't see the comments really well from here, but um, I'll try to answer them now. And if I can't, I will come back and answer them. And I'm not so concerned with brush strokes right now because I'm going to be going back over this again. We're going to be going back over it um, with other colors. I'm going back with the Hurricane Gray. And again, not concerned with the edges. I just want to get this top part done and then I'll go along the edges later. And then, like I said, I think I'm gonna do it in black. The, the caviar color. Okay. The mister that I'm using is a continuous mister. Um, it doesn't give you heavy droplets, it just gives you a nice fine mist. We do sell these at Dixie Bell. Um, and it is filled with just plain water. I use filtered water so that my paint doesn't get contaminated with anything from our spigot. Okay. All right. We're almost done with this first layer of paint. Back with the Hurricane Gray. I need a little bit more water on there. And again, I'm not concerned with it being um, blended together too much. I need some more paint. Oh. Okay. Okay. 
Now I'm close enough that I have to get my glasses on. <laughs> the closer I get to it, the less I can see. I don't know about any of you guys, but um, I really don't like having more glasses. It's like I'm thinking, I, I wonder, do they do contacts for uh, reading? Because that's what I need. Okay, now I'm going to go with the gravel road. And I'm not getting full coverage with these yet. We are going to be putting a, a quite a bit more paint on here. When I was done with the um, table I did for my neighbor, it became it was quite textured and um, I really liked it. So I thought when I did it, I wasn't really thinking about how I was doing it or what I was doing. So this is probably not going to be completely the same. But the idea is going to be the same. And instead of just dry brushing the top, I wanted to get this layered on here. Okay. So now we've got Hurricane Gray and a gravel road alternating. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to add a little bit of black, which is the caviar. But I'm only going to add it in certain places. I'm going to wet this so that it keeps those activated. Okay. And now I'm going to just come in with some black. And I am making sure that I go all the way to the edge. And then I'm just kind of blending that between those two colors. Just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to come oh, about right here. And this is the caviar. I'm just going to put a line in here like this. And then I'm just going to blend it in. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more. And put that right up here. And I'm trying not to work the paint too much because I don't want it to get muddy. Okay, so now I have a little bit of caviar on top of the gravel road and the hurricane gray. And I'm going to go back and do a little bit more of the original colors. Okay. And a little bit more paint here. Like I said, I don't really have a plan. This is just kind of me doing my thing. Sometimes I have happy accidents and sometimes I don't. So y'all are going to kind of get my process with me. If you can call it that. Okay. So I'm going back with my other two brushes, my gravel road and my hurricane gray. And I'm going to put my glasses down. That's so awkward having to carry this. Okay. So I'm going to mist it just a little bit more. And I'm going to go back over the original part, okay? So I've got my Hurricane Gray. Now this time, I'm getting a little bit more coverage. Bringing it to the, to the, all the way to the edge. Oh, my word. I think I need bifocals. Oh, gosh, I can't believe I need bifocals. I never thought I would be old enough for that. My son likes to call me a boomer. I do not like that term. Just so you know. Okay. So that's the hurricane gray. Now I'm going to mist it again, and I'm going to bring the gravel road into the black, the caviar.
Okay. Going back in with the Hurricane Gray. Now, when I did this table, um, I did a video a couple days ago when I first started it. And I did not sand this table. It was not in bad shape at all. It just needed to have a very good cleaning. Okay. And then we went right into putting the paint on. And that's the great thing about Dixie Bell. The only time you really need to put a bonding primer on is if you have a very slick surface or if you are going to have bleed through you'll want to use boss to help with that and both of those products are available from Dixie Bell um, and I have them on my website uh, paintfixation.com now, I know y'all are probably looking at this thinking it's a hot mess, but trust me, I mean, I like it. I shouldn't say trust me, it's going to be gorgeous. I mean, everybody's different. Everybody has different opinions and different likes. But I like the way it turned out, so I wanted to try it. Okay, we're getting close to the end here, and then we're going to add a little bit of the pine cone and a little bit of the fluff. Right here on the edge. Okay. Now this is just kind of my base. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of the um, caviar where I sprayed it. It um, is a little thin, so I'm going to put a little bit more on there. And I'm going to drag it through like this. And if you wanted to do something like this, you could keep it lighter or darker depending on your taste. Um, when I did it for my customer, she wanted it to be a little darker than light. So we added the black caviar. Okay, now we have, now we're getting a nice edge, a clean edge on these. Again, they're not really blended together. I don't want them to be blended. I don't want them to be muddied together. We're just getting the color down to give us a base for the dry brushing. Okay. All right, I like the way that that looks so far. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the, just a little bit of the fluff and a little bit of the, um, now when you guys come on here tell me where you're from so that I know where you're watching from and if you enjoy this video please 
spread it along to your friends. Okay. Now I'm just adding a little bit of fluff in here. I don't want a lot. And I'm just going to smooth it out some. My paint is still wet. If you start to get drag marks, you can um, dampen it a little bit more. Just right there. Okay. And then I'm going to add a smidgen of, actually, let me get a different brush. I'm going to get the French tip brush because I don't want a whole lot of the um, pine tin. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of find some places to put this. I don't want it a lot, just a little bit. Okay, now, I'm going to put a little bit down here. Okay, I'm happy with the way this looks. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like, but remember, this is not what it's going to look like when we're done, okay? Let me bring this around here. This is just the base to give me a good base for the dry brushing that I'm going to do, okay? So, this is what it looks like. Do you see that? So we have Hurricane Gray, Gravel Road, Caviar, Fluff, and Pine Cone. And I know it looks like a hot mess, but hopefully when I'm done, it'll look good. So while that dries, because I'm going to let that dry, and then, because if I try and dry brush over the wet um, paint, I'm not going to get a dry brush look to it. It's going to be, it's going to be muddy in there. So while that is drying, I'm going to work on this. So I'm going to use black wax. <clears throat> and let me get my wax brush. I use, for my waxes, I use um, chip brushes. And I cut them down. And I don't wash them. They don't need to be washed. They work great when they're like this. I've got some baby wipes in case I get too much. And I've got some shop towels. So I've got shop towels, maybe wipes. Okay. So now I'm going to go and that easy piece of wax is on there. Hopefully it's done what it needs to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a, um, let me bring you down some. Whoop. I didn't mean to bring you down that fast. I'm sorry. Let me get that shadow off there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to shadow in some of the black in the corner here. Okay. And I'm just going to rub it in so that it has a soft look to it. And I'm going to feather it out a little bit. If I get too much on here, if I don't like the way it looks, I can always go over it with some clear wax and it, and it acts like an eraser. But, so I'm just going to rub this on here. And I'm going to bring it out. So as I come out from the corner, I'm just bringing the pressure off of it so that it's not quite as much, um, so it's not as, so it's a little bit more translucent. It's not as opaque. Okay. Like that. I think I like that. Okay. So I might go back there. I might take a little bit. Let me see. Oops, it's my last one. So I'm going to have this flat so it doesn't have any crinkles in it. And I'm just going to go over this 
and just give it a little bit of a um, softer look to it, okay? Can you see the difference? So it's almost like a shadow, like that. And I'll, you know, as I work, I might change that or make it less. But like I said, I can put clear wax on that and make it lighter if I want to. Okay, so now I'm going to come here and I'm going to put some in the recessed areas. And I'm just going to push it in there. I might need to get me a smaller brush. I tell you, this detail on this is so deep. It's hard to get in there. So I'm just pushing the wax down into the recessed areas so that it can um, give it some definition. I'll bring you over here a little bit because there's a... Can y'all see okay? There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take my baby wipe and I'm just going to wipe the raised areas. Now, do you see how that pops? See the difference between this area and this area? Now we can see all of the detail. Okay, so I'm just going to keep moving around. Just waiting for that top to dry. And I'm pushing this in here kind of hard because um, these are really deep recesses in here. I don't know that I've had a piece that was quite so deep. Okay, going back to my white. And you see how that's coming off there really easy? That's because I put the easy peasy wax on there. If I had not done that, um, there would be a much heavier shadow of black left on there. But because I used the easy peasy wax and it created a barrier between the paint and this wax, I'm not getting, um, it's not grabbing onto the paint like it would if I had not done that. So what do y'all think? How are you liking that? Ooh, I like it. Okay. It's going to move to this area. Sorry about my head getting in the way. Okay. Now you can kind of get, you can get this look as well with the Dixie Dirt. Um, you would use a clear wax and then put your Dixie Dirt on there. And I may put a little bit on here just because it gives it a little bit more um, of a natural look. Wendy, if you're still on, can you see okay? Is the lighting okay? I'm going to get a fresh um, baby wipe. You 
You see how easy that is, guys? It's so easy to do this. Anybody can paint furniture. You don't have to be scared. You're basically slapping it on and wiping it off. Just like Mr. Biondi says. Wax on, wax off. It's that easy. Yeah. Woo. I like it. I'm going to move this light over here. It's casting some heavy shadows. Now it's even worse. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get the best angle here. There. You see the difference? This is with wax and this is without wax. It's just a very easy way to show the beauty and the details. Now, if you're doing a piece and you want a different colored wax, but say we don't carry it or you can't find it, you can take the clear wax and add a little bit of paint to it. You don't want to add too much, but just add enough to tint it and you can make your own custom colors. I've done it before and it works really well. So let's say you wanted a blue wax, which, you know, is hard to find. You can just add it to your clear wax and make a custom wax. And the great thing about Dixie Bell, if you haven't heard about our waxes, they are water-based waxes. So you can paint over them if you decide you don't like it. You do not have to use mineral spirits and take the wax off. As long as the wax is dry, you can go right back over it. So it's, it's the perfect product for people like me who change their minds about how something looks. I'm sorry about my dog. She must hear somebody outside. All the kids are out there playing. I'm getting a clean one. See how good that easy peasy wax works? Hold, keeping a barrier between the paint and the black wax. Somebody in my house, but my daughter's home, so she'll, she'll handle it. How's that look? You liking it? I like it. Okay, we're going to finish up this little edge, and then I think this is almost... There's still a couple places that are a little bit damp. There's a little bit, of, I hit that today. It's that little scratch right there. I hit it with, um, I'm just moved into this room and so I was moving stuff around. So I will just touch that up a little bit later. Okay, and now I'm going to add um, a little bit of wax to this corner right here, just to give it a shadow. And I'm not putting any more wax on my brush. I'm just going to use what's on there. And then as I come out, I'm going to lighten it up. I'm going to get a shop towel. What do I do with it? Oh, there it is. I'm going to use a flat edge on my shop towel. And I'm just going to soften this up. Okay. 
And I did this just with what was left on my brush, okay? I didn't add any paint to it, or wax to it, I'm sorry, I spoke. Okay, so that side's a little bit further out than this side. Over here, so I'm going to bring this out just a little bit. And if I decide later that I want to make this a little bit less or a little bit more, I can take it back off with the clear wax or I can just add more black wax. But right now, I'm kind of liking that. And I think I'm going to bring this down, down here. I'm going to get a little bit of this off. And I'm going to just shadow this edge. Just a little bit. just to kind of bring it down into the curve of the piece down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. I'm sorry about the lighting, guys. I thought I had my lighting all down, Pat, but it's just not working for me. And I can't see because of the comments. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit like I did that one. Just feather it in and then smooth it out. Just to kind of enhance the curve of the piece right there so it doesn't look like it was just stopped. Let's see what that looks like. That looks better. Okay, so I think the top is about ready to finish. Let's see, I, there's a little bit wet right here. It's still, ooh, I just messed it up. That's okay, I'm gonna be blind over it with the brush. But let me see. There's still some places that are damp. So let's do this leg over here while we wait. And then I'll show you how I'm, how I'm going to do the top. See? It's going to look different than that. Trust me, guys. But let's do this leg right here while we wait for that child to finish drying. And I think I'm going to get on this other side. Shadow drive me crazy. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Thanks, Annette. Okay, so I'm going to turn this a little bit this way so I can see it too. Okay. Hey, girl. She must not be doing her schoolwork. Okay, so I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to smush this in here. These are very deep recesses, so I, got, I really got to give it some a push to get it in there. was going to do um, like a blue and white on this kind of a beachy look but the the style of the piece I just didn't think it would go with that I wanted it to be a little bit less beachy of course I'm not into the beachy stuff now I probably should start thinking more like a customer I'm in Florida coastal stuff is very popular but I just don't like it it's just hard for me to paint it. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this back. I'm 
and get it right on. And I get these wipes at the dollar store, so they're very inexpensive. I, where I'll get them when they're on sale. Sometimes I can just use a paper towel, but th this is, um, I'm having to use a lot of wax to get deep in these crevices, so it's really taking the baby wipes to get it off. Okay. <laughs> Melissa, it's not spoken for. This one's going to be for sale. If I had known you were going to be interested, I would have done some colors. I know how you like color. We may have to add some color if you decide to get it. And it has beautiful claw feet. And there's a hair in there. And then it's gone. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to, um, this is just about ready for me to dry brush it. So I'm going to take this and dry this off a little bit. And then I'm going to just give this a little bit of a shadow. And then soften it up. And I'm going to come around this curve, I think, like this. And this is just kind of how I do, guys. That's why I say that doing painting furniture is not hard. You you know, you can start it one way, and then you can end up getting a completely different finished look. And with the Dixie Belle paint, it just makes it so easy because you don't have to take it, you don't have to sand it back, and you don't have to take the wax off. If tomorrow I decide that I want to paint this piece blue or orange, red, as long as the wax is dry, then I can paint right over it. Okay, I like the way that looks. How's that look? How's that showing on camera? Okay, so now I'm going to finish this top, top of this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a chip brush, and I'm going to use all the colors, and I'm just going to keep layering it until I get the look that I want, okay? So I'm going to raise this back up so y'all can see the top. I don't, I'm sorry, I'm probably making y'all extremely dizzy, but. Okay. I'm going to move it back this way a little bit. And I'm going to change this lighting a little bit. So that I can see it. Okay. All right. Let me get one more chip brush. I've got two here, but I'm thinking I might need another one. And these are all different. Um, some of them are newer. Some of them are older. It doesn't matter. They don't need to be a good brush. It's the nice thing about dry brushing is you kind of want it to be um, with a brush that's textured. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start dry brushing in some of the perking gray my good pick towel. Okay. So when I dry brush, I dab it off a little bit of my paper towel because I don't want it to be real thick. And I'm just going to pull it across. And I'm going to do this all the way across all the colors. Okay? And I don't need to worry about whether I, I want brush strokes. I'm going to lay that right there. And I'm just going to pull it across all these colors. And we're just going to, I'm just layering. Some of the colors might disappear for a little bit. But you'll see as I keep going, everything will come back out. I'm not worried about the edges because I'm going to go back and paint those, and I'm thinking I'm going to do this in full caviar. And 
And in doing this, I'm adding texture. When this is done, it will have an actual, it will be a raised um, surface. I'm not worried about having thicker areas than other areas. Just laying the paint on there with a the dry brush. And I'm, if you can notice here, I'm being random. Now, if I hadn't put this base of color on here, this would have been a very light, because I had sawmill gravy on here first, and so it would have been a very light background. And I didn't want it to be a stark difference between the dry brushing and the um, top of the table. And that's why I went ahead and used the, all the colors that I'm going to be dry brushing with as the base. And as you can tell, I am not using any specific technique. I am just laying it on there. Some of it's thicker than others. And this is just kind of, you're going through the way you want it to look. You might get more gray on there than you like. See, I smushed this with my fingers, so I'm just gonna go right over that. So that's my first layer of Hurricane Gray. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Can you see the, do you see the difference? Oh, it's lighting. I'm so sorry. Can you see it? So we're breaking up that color, breaking up those stripes. Dang it. I need to invest in some more lights. Okay, or different lighting or something. Okay, so now that was her finger. Now I'm going to go a different chip brush with Gravel Road. <clears throat> gravel Road is one of my favorite dark colors. I love it. So now I'm going over with the Gravel Road, and I'm literally just going to just every anywhere I think it needs it. Some of it will go right back over what I just used. I got a drip right there. So I'll just get it out there. And I'm being very random with this. I'm not going over just where my gravel road was originally. And because I'm layering this, I might go over this a couple more times, and that's where you're going to get all of your texture from, is just going over it multiple times. And I'm sorry about the lighting in here. I will take pictures of this and post them when it's done. If you can't see how this is going. And I, I guess this is kind of like a driftwood look. I mean, I don't really like to label my stuff because I don't know. Like I'm not real good with, oh, that's this kind of look or that kind of look. This is just my kind of look. Just how I want it to look. Break this left up right there. Okay. All right, so that's getting more like I want it. Now I'm going to grab another chip brush and go in with some caviar. I've got over here, I need to get myself another squirt. 
I'm not sure how dark I want this, so I'm going to tap this and just kind of... This caviar is going to give us a good contrast. And because I'm using so little paint, the areas that I just painted, there's a few of them that are a little bit dry, wet still, but for the most part, they're, they're dry. And I'm just careful not to get into those wet areas because I don't want this to end up um, muddy. Okay. I can't see y'all's comments because... I'm way over here and I'm old and can't see. It's like I can't see near, I can't see far. I'm going to have to go to the eye doctor, I think, and figure something out. I mean, I'm thankful that I still have eyesight, but doing what I do, it's, it's, it's a real pain having to take my eyeglasses off and on. Off and on, off and on, off and on. Can y'all kind of see what I'm going for here? Okay. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of pine cone, not much. I've got my French tip. The French tip has this kind of a tip on it, so I can get just a little bit of um, paint. And I'm just going to, and just very lightly, add a little bit of the pine cone. Just enough to add a little bit of dimension. It's not going to be much. I'm just barely tipping it in the paint. So let me get y'all's opinion. What color should I put to the edging on this? So for those of you that are just coming on, we have Sawmill Grady on the bottom with black wax. I was thinking a black edge, but maybe I should do dark gray. What do y'all think? I wanted it to be contrasting to the top. I don't want it to be um, the same technique on the edges. So don't tell me to paint it the same as the rest of it because I'm not going to. I'm going to, I want the edge to be a solid color. Okay, so that's the pine cone. You see that? Starting to come together, right? Now I'm going to add a little bit of fluff, which is going to require another brush. And this is what I was talking about, guys, the other night when I said that when I'm doing techniques like this, I literally go through 10 brushes. So right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I do, I have 10 brushes. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of fluff. Fluff is our, next to our whitest white, cotton is the white. So we're going to use a little, little, little bit of white. So Melissa says gray. I, I think I, I think I agree. At first I thought I was going to do black, but I'm thinking I'm going to go with the dark gray. She may be saying that because she's thinking about buying it though. Right, Melissa? You going to buy it? I'm sure this will look great in whatever future house you have, honey. Not going to add a whole ton of this. Now I keep saying I'm not going to add that much, and I just keep adding more and more and more. Okay. I think 
need some right here. Okay, so that are, that says we did a base layer of more of a blended look to give us a base layer of all the colors. And now I have dry brushed all the colors on here. But I'm going to add more layers. But I want it to dry. So it shouldn't take long. There's just a few little pieces on here. But do y'all see the difference? And let me turn it this way. So if you're just coming on, you can catch the replay. You'll see what we did first. But this is how it's looking now. Okay. This is how it's looking now. Let's see. I think either black or gray would look good. <laughs> so we'll see. I, I may do, um, maybe I'll do an edge in black and then a little half edge in gray and see how I like that. Okay. So while that's drying, I'm going to put um, some more black gray on here. Again, this is not done. See how this white is here? I'm not happy with the way that's curved. I want it to be more of a straight look, but um, that's easily corrected. Where's my white brush? Okay, I'm going to run the side. Get the shadow. I see Kim's on here. Kim was with me today. She painted a beautiful heart today. I posted it on my Facebook page. Y'all go check it out. She did a great job. Okay, so while those little edges the top dries. I'm going to bring y'all down here and I'm going to add some wax to this. I tell you what, the lighting in here is starting to give me anxiety. I do not like it. How's that? That's better. I'll bring it all in. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, where's wax? So, I'm going to take this wax. I'm going to smish it all in here. And again, I'm having to press down pretty hard because these are so deep. So, you guys, if you enjoyed this video, if it's something that you think your friends and family or their friends and family or their friends and family would like to see, please spread it along. Facebook doesn't like us to say S-H-A-R-E. So if you can spread it like peanut butter and jelly, that would be great. Give me a like. Give me a thumbs up or a heart, whatever they have on there. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, if you are watching and you are local, I am going to be getting my paint in tomorrow for my premiere status. So I will be carrying the entire line of Dixie Belle. And I'll have all the paint in the store, hopefully either Saturday or Monday. They're, they're closed on Sundays. Um, I mean, I may be able to do it tomorrow. It just depends on how it's it's a lot of paint. So it's going to take me a lot. Of, it's going to take a long time to... Um, get it all labeled but um, I'm really excited to know that you guys that are around here y'all can come and see the shop it's at Antiques for You at 801 Blaney Boulevard and when you come I'll have anything that you need it'll be there and if it's not I sh drop ship right to your house so for you guys that are watching that are not local and you want to try Dixie Bell or you have tried it and you want to get some more, I am happy to ship it directly to you. I offer $8 flat shipping up to $50 in purchases, and I offer free shipping if you spend over $50. It's a great deal. You can't beat it. I mean, you may be able to beat it, but would you want to? Don't you want to get it from me? Because, you know, it's so much fun. Y'all can get on here and see what a hot mess I am. So I'm taking my baby wipe and I'm just pulling the wax back off all of the raised areas. And for those of you that are just stepping in, I put easy peasy wax on before we started. 
and it has created the barrier that I need between the paint and the wax so that we don't get, um, so that we're able to remove it from the places that we want to remove it from. And this piece is so nice that it, I mean, it's kind of a pain that the recesses are so deep, but it really makes it a lot easier to remove the wax from the raised areas and not from the recessed areas. Sometimes when I'm doing this, it pulls the wax back out of the recessed areas, but boy, this is not a problem with this one. I really wish, I was getting, Melissa, if you're still on here, I was going to keep this piece, but it is too big for the front room. And so I'm not going to be able to keep it. And see, the more I take off of the raised areas, the more contrast I'm getting and the more detail you can see. Woo, it's so pretty. I'm liking that. Okay. Now, where is my, okay. So this is, this is just about dry. I'm going to get this dampness off of here from the white. And I'm just going to come in here and add some wax to the edges. I probably should be using a painter's a little artist brush to get in here, but this will work for now. And I'm doing this left-handed, so forgive me. I'm getting it everywhere. So I'm just going to take the shop towel and I'm very lightly just rubbing on the wax so that it kind of gives it a little softer look to it. You see how that softened that up? See that? Okay. And then I'll do this edge over here. And, then, and when I'm using the shop towel, guys, I always get a flat edge so that if it's not, if it's wrinkled, sometimes it can show in the wax. And so I like to use a flat edge so I can keep it soft. There we go. All right. So that edge is done. Now I'm going to go back to the top and I think I'm going to leave it like this. Can y'all see that pretty good? I'm going to leave it right there and then add some more layers. Okay. So I'm going to go back in with the hurricane gray. And this is the part where I start to decide, you know, what, what do I want my dominant colors to be? Um, you know, what do I want the, the bottom line to look like? This is the part where we're, we're getting to that point. Now, if you're like me, I might let this sit tonight and come back tomorrow and decide it needs a little bit more gray or a little bit more white. But I don't want the white to be the prominent color here. In fact, I may go back. I'm thinking they're a little bit too bright. So I may use the sawmill gravy there because that's what I use on the rest of the piece. But that's the nice thing about this is I can do that <laughs> and just go back over it. So this is the hurricane gray. This is the lightest gray that, I'm, that I've used. And I'm just creating more texture and more dimension. Now, Melissa, speak now and forever hold your peace. If you really are serious about this piece, this is when you need to tell me. Um, darker, lighter, what you want. I've lost my hurricane gray bottle. It's probably going to be here somewhere. Ugh. There it is. Sorry, guys. Kind of a hot mess. Okay. All right. So we're going to go with this. So I'm going to cover up some of this white, the black. I'm just I'm not feeling it. And so I'm going to use the gray to kind of mute it some. I'm actually thinking either sawmill gravy or I might use some of the French linen. Wait, which one do y'all think I should use? Should I use the sawmill gravy, which is what I use on the edges, the bottom, or should I use some French linen? Because I don't, the white's too stark. 
<clears throat> for me. Now, y'all might look at it and think, girl, that looks good. I like that. But that's just personal preference, I think. Hear my daughter on the phone in there, so hopefully she won't get too loud. How's that looking? French linen. Do your thing. <laughs> I love you, girl. She's my biggest fan. I think I am going to use some French linen. The French linen is one of my favorite colors. It's It's got some brown undertones. And I am going to kind of cover up this black. I don't like it. I just don't, I think it's a little bit too stark for um, the bottom part. I kind of picked up a little bit of the hurricane gray with this since it's in the same tub here. Now I'll turn my brush sideways. I'm going in like this to make it a little bit more narrow um, strokes. So you're just, you know, you start with your base and you just work your way up. So I'm going narrower now so that now I have my strokes are a little bit different. They're a little bit different size. It gives it even more character. Real quick, I'm going to throw some French linen on here, and then I'm going to, um, if I can find it, here it is. I'm going to throw some French linen on it, see how we like it. Let me get a different brush here. Okay, so this is the French linen, and we haven't used this one yet. Let me get my paper towel so I can dab it off. Oh, I like that much better than the white. So French linen and sawmill gravy are beautiful blended together. If y'all have not tried it. Okay, what do y'all think, guys? I think that's much better. This is kind of like... Um, what I've been talking about with warm and cool colors. I think the fluff was just way too warm. I mean, cool, I'm sorry, I spoke. Way too cool for these colors. All of these colors kind of have a little bit of a, a brown undertone. And so using the fluff just made it a little, it was just a little bit too cool. And I'm bringing this in at the narrow edge of the brush. I apologize for this video being so long, guys, but I'm kind of in my groove, and I just figured I'd take y'all along with me. 
I went kind of heavy on that one, but I can always go back and dry brush over it. I'm going to bring this one out a little bit, make it longer. Sometimes you also got to know when to say when, but I have a really, really hard time doing that. It's definitely one of my worst traits is knowing when to say when, when to stop. Okay, now I'm going to use the um, gravel road, the darker, darkest one that we're using, and I'm just going to soften these lines up. Oops, that's not, that's black. So now we've got the French linen peeking through. That was a good choice, Melissa. I'm liking it. So if you're just popping in, the colors that we're working with tonight, Sawmill Grady, Caviar, Hurricane Gray, Gravel Road, and French Lemon, and a little bit of Pine Cone, which I'm going to add a little bit more of that too. So what do y'all think? Is it starting to look like it's coming together? I'm liking it. Sometimes you gotta step back and look at it. Kind of decide where you wanna add some color or take color away. And when this dries, it's gonna have a texture to it because I am using the chip brushes and I do not care about having, I actually want brush strokes. You know, everybody talks about Dixie Belle. We can do this without any brush strokes, but sometimes we want them because they add character to a piece. So right now what I'm doing is I'm kind of stepping back and looking at it, and I don't want any harsh edges to the color. I want all the colors to kind of layer upon each other, and these ones that are kind of sharp on the edge, I'm just kind of taking the um, a little bit of a lighter color and just not blending it out, but just kind of giving it a little touch of a lighter color just to kind of break it up so that it doesn't end sharply. I don't want I don't want the colors to end sharply. I want it to all kind of layer on top of each other. So now I'm just kind of cleaning up my edges. So all these little ends that are harsh, I'm just giving them a little tap paint so that they layer instead of just stop. This is personal preference. It's just the way I want it to look. I don't want to have harsh edges. I want it to kind of feather into each other and layer. That's the nice thing about being a creative is that's exactly what it is. You do what, what you like. If anyone tells you that they don't like what you've done, you tell them to go find another artist. Because there are enough of us out there, there's somebody that can do it the way you want to see it, the way you like it. And I can do it the way you like it too, but this piece is, it's, you know, it's mine right now, so. I'm doing it the way I want it to look. So for you guys that are furniture artists that are watching, don't ever let someone tell you you're not doing it right because there is no right. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. I mean, you have to prep your piece. There is, there are rules that cannot be broken. You can, you cannot just 
get a piece like this one from the thrift store and start pet throwing paint on it. There's no such thing as slapping on paint because then you're just going to have a hot mess. Like we saw yet, so two days ago when I cleaned this, we saw that this piece was a lot dirtier than it looked. It looked very clean and um, it was not clean. Okay. And I was going to go in with some more pine cone, but I don't think I am. I've got just enough of it peeking through that I think I'm, I think I'm good with the pine cone. I'm just cleaning up these edges so that I don't have harsh edges. And I'm actually just taking, I'm taking both the gravel road and the hurricane road and um, kind of using them on each end of the brush. That black right there is a little harsh for me. Okay, I'm going to say that's it. I'll come back and look at it tomorrow when it dries and see. And really quick, before you go, we're going to see what color we want on this edge. I'm going to try the gravel road on half and the black on the other half and see what we got. And then I'll let y'all get back to your regular schedule program. Okay, so we're going to do gravel road on the side. This is the dark gray that I use on the top. I love this color. Okay, that's Gravel Road. Okay, now we're going to go with some black and see what we think. Black was my original thought, but um, then I started to second guess myself. Now we're going to go with him with the, her the um, caviar. You know what? I'm going to try some Hurricane Gray too. Let me wipe my brush off. Excuse me. That snuck up on me. Man, if someone's just popping in, they're going to be like, what is she doing with the edge of that table? Of course, this is just one coat, so it's not really giving a perfect. Okay, let me see. Let me stand up. I don't know. I'm going to let y'all look at it. Can you see it? Melissa, are you still here or are you gone? Hey, Melissa, what do you think? Dark gray, medium gray, black. Of course, we can always try a different color. We can leave it. I could clean up the edges. 
and we can leave it sawmill gravy too. We could do light. That might look good too. Just leaving the light color. The first gray. You like the dark gray. This one here. So that's the gravel road. And it's hard to tell because of the lighting. So this one. So Melissa's on here. She's thinking about purchasing this piece from me. And so we're giving her a little bit of a look about what it can look like. And she's liking the dark gray. And that's this one right here. So for tonight, we're going to leave it like this, let it dry. Um, since Melissa is interested, she'll probably come by here and take a look at it and make sure that it's how she wants it to look, if she wants different colors in here. Um, but this is the way that this ended up looking. Let me stand up. Can you see that? That's the end result. So, I really appreciate everybody tuning in with me tonight. Um, if you didn't catch the beginning of the video on how I got this look, you can catch it on the replay. And if you like the video, please uh, send it along to your friends and family or give me a heart or a thumbs up. That'd be great. And I'm so glad you guys came and hung out with me today. Thank you, Melissa. I hope you like it. I'm so happy that you want it. <laughs> come see it tomorrow so you can come see me. But you guys have a good night. Um, I may be back here tomorrow night. It depends. My son is coming to visit from his um, home in Melbourne. And I'm excited to see him. And so I may not be back on until Monday because family comes first. But thanks, everybody, for joining in. I'll talk to you later. Bye.